Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrew. I'm here at my Goodwill store today. We are getting ready to go on in and film the Goodwill challenge. Now there's a lot of different versions of this floating around on the YouTube. Some people are doing like a 10 minutes, $10 situation. But today I'm making my own rules because you know that's what I like to do. So part of why I'm here today, it's kind of an exciting announcement. I'm gonna be partnering with Goodwill over the next couple of months, producing some content over on their channel. They're gonna be sharing some of the content that's on my channel, just a little cross promotion there. This is gonna be the start of a campaign, the Goodwill Create campaign. They are wanting to get people excited about getting in the store and doing some shopping. And so here are my rules. Number one, I have 30 minutes to shop. It's kind of like a Project Runway moment, so I feel like 30 minutes feels like a very Project Runway number, and it's gonna give me a good amount of time to find what I wanna find. Number two, I have $100. Now, that's gonna go a long way at Goodwill, we all know that. Uh, I just wanted to make sure, we actually are here today, you can see I have a little camera crew here with me. We are filming a little uh, TV action for Goodwill here, and so because this outfit is gonna be seen by a lot of people, I wanna make sure it looks good, so we're gonna go for $100. If I can get more than one outfit, Great, we'll see what we can find in there. Uh, other rules, have to make a head-to-toe outfit. So that means some sort of shirt, some sort of pants, some sort of shoes. Yeah, we'll see what we can find. Maybe a jacket, maybe some accessories as well. So we all know that it can be a little tricky. You know, sometimes we go into the thrift store and it's like, you know, they're playing our song and you're feeling the vibe and everything you find is magical. And then other times it's like, you gotta really hunt and see, see what's in there. So we'll see what we end up with today. Uh, just a couple thoughts before I go in, a little bit of strategy. I tend to think that it's a good idea when you go into the thrift store to have like sort of a couple things going in mind. Otherwise, when you walk in, it's so overwhelming. There's so much stuff and there's so much potential that you're like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. So a couple of things that I might be looking for today. Again, no expectations, but we'll see. I want a good pair of jeans. You guys know that I have a habit of blowing out the crotch in every single pair of jeans that I own. I've been looking for some new jeans. That would be something that I wear a lot. Maybe I can compile something together, do kind of a denim patchwork situation, we'll see. Also, you guys know I'm working in real estate now, so I'm thinking a lot about like business casual for summer. It's hot here in Georgia, but I also wanna look professional when I'm meeting with a client or doing a showing or something like that. So maybe some sort of suiting, um, maybe like a suit and shorts. We'll see what we can find on that level. Um, also, when I go in, other strategy thing, I'm probably gonna head to the shoes first. Shoes are gonna be a little tricky to find, and so I think that's gonna kinda dictate where the outfit goes. Um, so we'll start there, and we'll head around the store and see what we can find. All right, I'm setting a timer here on my phone. Three, two, one, and here we go. In keeping with my plan, I did start in the shoe section and found these awesome black brogues that were in great shape and in my size. I really love these as is, so I probably won't be making any changes to them. Also, there wasn't really anything else in my size that worked for me, so we're gonna go with these. I also came across this gray gap blazer that was giving school uniform vibes. Love it. The Goodwill gods were on my side and bearing many identical twins. A bunch of matching mesh jerseys, a rack of crisp new white cotton boxer shorts, two similar but different white dress shirts, and two very similar toned pairs of Wrangler charcoal salvage jeans. All right, little midway checkpoint here. Shoes are definite yes. Blazer is pretty good. I don't know that there's a way that I can make it better. Some things need to just be what they are. Um, but I'm still gonna hold on to that because I like that a lot. Don't love the logo on this, but I love the color blocking. Clearly I like color blocking, so I wondered if there was a way to kind of work with that. There's a couple different things today. These jeans, these are actually brand new and identical. They're like a raw selvage type jean. Love the fabric, I think it looks really expensive, so. I'm definitely going to consider both of those since there's two. Maybe it becomes a, a jumpsuit. We know we love a jumpsuit. All right, thinking about that. Also, where were we? There are a bunch of these mesh jerseys that all match. So, I'm thinking it could be a really 
awesome opportunity to make kind of a patchwork jacket. I love mesh. And they are $1.99. So, so yeah, we're going to grab a bunch of those and see what we can do. After a brief stint in the women's section looking for zippers and closures, the clock was ticking and it stressed me out. Time check. Woo! Minute and a half. Okay. I pulled it together and made it out within 30 minutes. All right, I'm in the car now. I'm heading over back home to my studio and we're gonna be uh, starting the flipping process. I got some good stuff, definitely more than one outfit. Um, and I only spent $67. Only spent, I mean, you know, of 100, that doesn't seem like that much, but got a good amount of stuff for that. So, um, yeah, it's going pretty well so far. All right, guys, so I took the evening last night to sort of assess what needs to happen, seam rip, you know how I do, taking things apart, really looking at what needs to happen before we put them back together. So today I'm going to try to tackle look one. Um, let me show you what I have going on here. So I started by taking both shirts and seam ripping the sleeves off. Um, part of the issue with the fit is that this sits quite a bit off the shoulder for my size, which is fine for me when it's sleeveless, but it made it look a little baggy with the sleeves on. So I took the sleeves off. Um, I have taken the collar off in various places. So this is one shirt that's been pinned over. So you can see both button plackets are there together. Uh, this is the collar of one shirt. You can see there's gonna be a little asymmetry. One side has a button, the other side doesn't. Back here in the back, I'm gonna be joining the two collars back here together. That um, allowed me to create that cool asymmetrical detail in the front, but also allowed me to take in uh, the neck a little bit. Because these shirts were like an extra, extra large or something, the neck was really super loose on me. So this will tighten it up and make it a little bit more crisp. I'm gonna get rid of some of this fabric in the back here with a little box pleat. Um, I'm gonna try to disappear some of these places like this. Uh, there's a seam right there. I'm gonna see if I can open that seam and tuck that away there. Same thing here down at the side where there's this overlap. I'm gonna see if I can open up the side seam of the shirt underneath and set that right in there. My plan is to attach everything together in top stitch and then cut out any extra so I don't have too much fabric layered up. After forming a plan in my head and doing some sketching and seam ripping, I could move from ripping apart the seams to cutting away excess fabric. I always start with the seam ripper since you can always press the undo button and sew it back together. Cutting is straight up permanent. For the head to toe look, I'm thinking of chopping up and combining the two white button front shirts to do a cool, deconstructed, asymmetrical look. And then adding a pair of white boxers to the bottom and giving them a little love to make them feel a little bit more polished and tie them into the deconstructed white top. Throw on the gap blazer, add some white stripes to it, add the black brogues, and we have a Maison Margiela meets Tom Brown mashup. Once I repin the diagonal pocket detail to lock in the placement, I tried the shirt on to check the length. I knew I wanted the hems to be uneven to highlight the different individual shirts, but I had pinned the undershirt a little bit too short on the mannequin. It's important to try things on during the process to make sure it's actually working, you know? I tried on the whole look to see how the lengths work with the jacket and the shorts. I drew a curved line parallel to the existing hem at the length that I wanted, plus seam allowance. Then I cut off the excess of the hem. I pinned the shirts together to be sure that they were all laying smoothly, and then cut off the excess along the side seam line of the undershirt. I've been all about using my new iron lately, so I opted to press the hem in place, turning it under twice before sewing it. This method left me with a much cleaner looking hem than usual. I removed any unwanted buttons and then hand sewed right along the existing seam line. 
I chose to hand sew rather than machine sew since the existing seam went under the buttons kind of, which would make it super tough to get my presser foot in there. Plus it really makes the seam invisible, which is cool. This will be a really important detail on the front, so that needs to look right. I needed to add that box pleat in the center back to resolve the extra fabric at the back of the shirt. So I detached the yoke from the rest of the shirt so that I can make the pleat at the bottom and smooth over the yoke at the top. I found the center, pinned in the pleat, and then tacked in a few stitches by hand to hold it in place. I did the same up at the neck to make the pleat go all the way up evenly. Then I turned my attention to that diagonal piece that I sewed on the front. Rather than stopping it at the shoulder, I decided to keep wrapping it around the body to see what would happen. I pinned and sewed it right along the existing seam line to secure it initially. The fabric was doubled for the remaining part, so I cut away the underlayer. Now all the pieces were coming together. The plan is to sew the original yoke on the old seam line over my new pleat, cut away the excess fabric from the original yoke that got pushed over to the right, and then drop my new angled piece down over the top to hide the edges. Not the best angle here to watch me make it happen. Plus my tripod fell. Rest in peace, crappy tripod. So this has turned into like an intense sort of origami situation where certain seams have to get folded in before others and everything is overlapping. Um, let me show you what's going on here. So what I think I'm gonna do that I didn't account for, I think I'm gonna keep this collar piece attached and take it right on that same diagonal all the way out. At this point, I muddled around for way too long trying different things to resolve the back and the collars before returning to literally the exact same plan that I started with. There are so many cool options when you do this kind of deconstructed work, but sometimes you just gotta keep it simple. I wrapped up the wrapping diagonal piece by cutting away the excess underneath and turning under the raw edge before pressing everything nice and flat. All right, y'all, it's a new day. As you probably can tell because it's a new day, I have spent way too long waffling back and forth trying to make decisions about this, trying it on, trying it on with different pieces. It's just been a lot. So we're just gonna get it done today. I folded over that wrapping diagonal piece so that it reached the other shoulder seam. I ripped open enough of that seam to allow it to disappear into the seam, which was very simple in concept, but surprisingly tough in execution, especially with one hand holding the camera. Now I could close up the open side seam and finish the armholes by turning them under twice, pressing, and then sewing. I fully reattached the first collar that was still hanging on all the way around to the new diagonal seam and added the new collar starting from the front and working back to that same diagonal seam. I marked right at the seam line where I wanted the two to meet up and opened them up to allow them to be sewn right sides together. This was honestly pretty tricky and involved some hand sewing under the collar to get all the raw edges tucked away, but the seams look pretty clean. Shirt done, so on to the shorts. I was still feeling super ambitious at this point in the process, so I decided to add pockets to make these more like shorts and less like boxer shorts. I made a paper pattern based on images I found online and cut them out of the remaining sleeves. I opened up the side seams in the shorts where the pockets would go, but it took me a minute to figure out how to pin them in. I did it wrong once and then had to take it out. Ugh, so annoying. I sewed them right sides together and then went over the edges of the existing seam to seal them up at the corners. Not my best work here, but they function and look better after some pressing. Pressing makes everything better. That's my big takeaway for this project. After many more hours of agonizing over what the shorts needed, I decided to use the cuffs and sleeves to create a little waistband and panel that would cover the flop. Almost like a skirt kind of, but less skirt and more kilt vibes. Almost like an additional shirt tail coming from the top. The pleating on the sleeve wasn't laying right, so I cut a panel out of the front of one of the shirts that I cut off. It already had a finished hem, so that would save me a step. I did have to turn under this little section below the cuff just to finish it off. Once I sewed the new panel to the cuff pieces, I pinned the panel down along the edge of the pocket on the left side. I sewed along the existing seam to attach it at the top and then carefully sewed along the pocket edge. 
I had to do these parts separately so that I wouldn't sew the pocket closed. That would be a waste. Now I could try it on to figure out how to sew the other side. The idea is that the other cuff would be sewn upside down to the other side so that it could be buttoned onto the cuff skirt panel piece and hold it tight across, and then unbuttoned to get in and out of it. So once I marked the placement, I sewed the cuff closed along the existing seam and used a vertical seam to attach it to the shorts. That way the elastic was still fully able to stretch horizontally. If I sewed it horizontally, it would keep that part from stretching, you know? For the jacket, I simply cut a few one-inch strips of heat transfer vinyl I had on hand from a previous video and ironed them onto the sleeve. Four stripes would be to Tom Brown, three would be to Adidas, two felt right and very classic. Since I got overly ambitious and ended up buying way more stuff in my haul than I could need for this one look, I ended up making two more looks. Be sure to check out part two of this little series to watch me bring those looks to life. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Also head over to the Goodwill Southern Rivers channel to check out the commercial that we made together and to see more thrift flip content from me over the coming months as a part of their create campaign. Now check out the finished head to toe look.